Just off of I-80 between Council Bluffs and Des Moines sits a 26-mile stretch of road with these. White painted telephone poles. Hundreds of them connect five communities between Adair and Dexter. While these might look like a novel roadside attraction, it is actually a historically significant part of Iowa's highway system, and it was once part of the road that connected America from coast to coast. At the turn of the 20th century, Iowa's road system was a mess. The majority of roads were no more than dirt paths, and very few were paved. Attempting to cross the state during inclement weather might mean being stranded in mud or snow, sometimes for days. The roads were so bad, Iowa was called the gumbo state, referring to the thick, dark soil, which for agriculture is great, but for road material is pretty poor. As automobiles became more and more popular throughout the country and the need for intrastate travel increased, Governor B.F. Carroll assembled delegates from all over the state for the Good Roads Convention in Des Moines. The delegates decided that the river-to-river -river road from Davenport to Council Bluffs would be the solution to Iowa's road woes. Towns fought fiercely during the early days of road development, where the roads went, money would follow. Towns began to build roads at an incredible pace. After the Good Roads Convention, the original White Pole Road was designated and followed along a railroad route from Des Moines to Council Bluffs. Poles along the route were painted white. This helped motorists know that they were still on the correct route, kind of like an early form of GPS. The communities that were part of this Great White Way, as it was then called, promised motorists a straighter, leveler, and shorter route across the state with a town every five to six miles along the way. The Great White Way Association plotted their Davenport to Council Bluffs route on county maps and submitted their registration with a $5 fee. The commission then awarded a certificate to the route on July 30th, 1914, making it the first certified route in Iowa. After various mergers with other roads and name changes, sections of the Great White Way became part of U.S. Highway 6, which at one point was the longest continuous east-west route in the United States, stretching from Cape Cod, Massachusetts to Long Beach, California. But by the mid-1960s, something changed. The act is the interstate highway system, a 41,000-mile network of our most important roads. After the passage of the Federal Aid Highway Act, the new interstate highway system connected the country in a new way. By 1965, Interstate 80 saw completion. This new four-lane route would fundamentally change the way Americans traveled. And the Great White Way, like so many other highways in the country, diminished in popularity. In 2002, this old highway was renamed to White Pole Road as a tribute to the original Great White Way. And poles along this 26-mile stretch have once again been painted white. This highway is a small piece of Iowa transportation history, and it's really an artifact of the ingenuity and tenacity Iowa towns had during the automobile boom of the early 20th century. If there's ever a time when you're driving from Des Moines to Council Bluffs, it might be worth it to pull off on one of the exits and experience this stretch of road to get a sense of what it was like to drive the Great White Way. <laughs>